tough section now, custing. So custing is a way of um, allocating um, costs, and in particular indirect costs, or also known as expenses or overheads. Um, but usually these are fixed costs as well. So a uh, little bit of a recap to the previous presentation, which is on cost centres and profit centres. So these are individual parts of the business where costs and revenue are recorded and therefore profit can be calculated. So here is the product portfolio of um, some of Coca-Cola, the Coca-Cola company's products. So imagine they wanted to treat all of these products as different profit centres. So what they'd need to do, um, and one of the reasons they might do this is because they want to compare performance and say, well, you know, is Dr Pepper more successful than Fanta or the other way around? But to be able to do this, because in reality they're actually made by one business, you would have to be able to allocate all the costs. Now the direct costs are going to be quite easy um, to allocate to each product range because we're going to be able to calculate how much does the glass bottle cost to make for this particular product and how much the ingredients cost. But it's here, it's the indirect costs that are going to be quite difficult. So the marketing for the whole of the Coca-Cola company is going to be hard to like break down um, the, the costs of you know employing the marketing managers unless they're only ever working on one product range um, and the accounting department as well how do you allocate their um, salaries to one cost uh, to one profit center it's going to be very difficult so but we're going to try and do it <laughs> so here are three costing methods that we're going to look at today so absorption costing where all of the indirect costs are going to be absorbed Contribution costing is where we uh, ignore these indirect costs or fixed costs. And then standard costing, uh, which is slightly different to these two methods actually, um, but we'll get on to that. So absorption costing is, um, uh, there are actually two methods to absorption costing. So remember we're going to um, allocate all of the indirect costs. So there's the arbitrary method and there's the apportion method. So firstly, the arbitrary method. So um, indirect costs are allocated based on the percentage of direct costs each product generates. So for example, if product A generates 40% of total direct costs, 40% of indirect costs are allocated to it. So if indirect costs are £170,000, so I'm thinking you know, indirect costs would be like expenses or overheads, um, so we times that by 0.4 or 40% and we get 68,000. So whatever the direct costs are, we add the 68,000 and that should be the total cost for the business. Um, however, the apportion method is a little bit different. So we look at the costs um, individually and try and work out well, what's really driven these costs and then find a basis for allocating. Um, some of these costs. So I'll just work for an example here. So we've got uh, indirect costs of 170 again, but if I break that down, 120,000 were HR costs and 50,000 were bank. And we've got these two um, products here. I should have done, I suppose, um, product A as having 40. I shouldn't have, because it did at the beginning. But um, so we're just imagining <laughs> for this example that we've got two different products to the previous example. But um, we've got direct costs of 60 and 40 got four members of staff working in A and six in B, and we've got different amounts of floor space. So, um, we can see that the total number of staff here is 10. Um, so actually product A is taking up 40% of, um, I suppose, the allocation of HR costs, or, you know, 40% of people, and product B is 60% of, um, Allocation. So I think the basis for this really is saying, well, if you've got more people in your department, they're going to be having more HR issues, uh, you know, training, recruitment, appraisals, those types of things, even maybe even redundancies, redeployment, retirement, all of those types of things. Um, so you might need to take up more of the HR officer's time. So it's working on that assumption. Here we've got floor space, which I suppose rent, you know, is looking at floor space isn't it so this is um 60 percent of uh, the floor space a, take, a is taking a is taking up so then we just times the 40 
50% by the HR Plus and 60 by the HR Plus as well. And so we get this, these figures here, and here 60 by um, the 50, and then 40 by the 50, and you get 20. So when we work it out, we get total costs of um, that there, so product A plus and product B plus. And we can see everything's been allocated, um, but we've just kind of broken it down um, so whereas the direct costs for product B were quite um, cheap, um, they are taking up quite a big bulk of the HR costs. Um, now if we compare this to the arbitrary method, so what I've done there is just moved the column from the end inwards. So we've got the total costs with the apportion method. Now remember the arbitrary method looks at the percentage of direct costs and then allocates the, the fixed costs based on that. So the percentage of the direct costs is there 60% and that's 40% and that's the direct cost. We, we don't have to add that up, we just do add. To find that, those numbers, we just add those two together. Um, so that would come to 100,000 and we do 60,000 divided by 100,000 and we get 60%. And 40,000 divided by 100 and we get 100%. Um, so if we do 60 times 170 and then 40 times 170, you get these numbers and then you can allocate them. Um, oops, sorry, you can add them to the direct costs and that's what you'd get. Now it's quite, you know, you're getting the same total obviously because we're not missing out any costs, but it's quite interesting, you know, product A um, using the apportion method looks much cheaper uh, than when they use the arbitrary method, whereas product B would prefer the arbitrary method because it would make them look more profitable than when they use the apportion method. Um, so it's quite interesting when you're doing these comparisons. These are the two columns that we compare. Um, but both methods, that I suppose the, the benefit of using them is you're taking all of the costs into account, the indirect costs that are difficult. But, uh, and that might make it easier to make um, pricing decisions as well, because obviously you don't want to price your product lower than it actually costs you to make it. But the arbitrary method is arbitrary, as the name suggests, so it's not based on objective judgment, so it could be quite inaccurate. And the apportion method, as I've just shown, it gets quite complicated and time consuming. So um, that's going to be difficult. And in some ways it is still quite arbitrary, because if we go back to this example, there we go, where the, this department has, oops, I'm going to have to try and slice those up. This department had four members of staff and this department had six members of staff, so they got the higher allocation. Well, how do we know that uh, that, that, <laughs> that warranted a higher allocation of the HR class? Because these six people might be really, you know, high-performing team members, never have any problems. These four, you know, in this department might have really high labour turnover, there's been disciplinary problems, you know, the, there might be no end to the problems, so that um, might not make sense to um, apportion the cost based on that. Okay, contribution costing, you actually did this as part of the AS course with um, break even, so contribution per unit is selling price minus the variable costs, uh, and total contribution, you could actually just times contribution per unit by the total number of units to get total contribution, but it is also known as revenue minus total variable costs. So unlike absorption costing, it's quite simple to calculate and um, it can be help, it can be used even to help you decide whether to accept a special order or not. However, because you're just like sort of forgetting about those fixed costs or indirect costs or overheads or expenses, whatever you want to call them, um, you're not going to want to use it where the main bulk of your costs are fixed costs, such as transport, because that's going to be very misleading um, for your business. But let's have a look at a past paper question. So we've got calculate the value, total value of contribution if they accept the new order and discuss the factors which they should consider before deciding whether or not to accept the order. So um, this is a, a manufacturer of ladies' clothing and um, they've been told by one retailer that they will buy um, 4,000 of the company's blouses if they drop the price from 12 to eight pounds 50. And then you've got the costs here, so variable cost six pounds, fixed cost four pounds, and profit um, of normally, or um, yeah, profit normally if they charge 12 pounds. But the question is, 
what contribution will they make and should they accept that order, this is a special order where you're accepting a lower price for the order. Um, so let's have a look at how you'd work this format question out firstly. So we'd need to work out the contribution, well this is just the way I'd do it, there are a few different ways to do it. So selling price minus variable cost, so they, if they accept the lower price, it'd be £8.50 minus 6 would be £2.50 would be the contribution per unit. And then if you times this by the number of units, you'd see that the total contribution would be 10,000. Really simple <laughs> numerical question for um, four marks. And then um, we've got, should they accept the order or not? So here are some things that you can read through um, that might make, that should make you think, not might make you think, should make you think about whether you should accept a special order or not whether a business should accept it. So pause it here if you want to have a look through that. The last method is standard costing. So this is um, calculating um, the usual or planned cost of an activity and maybe comparing them with the actual cost. So it's a bit like variance analysis. So this happens all the time, standard costing. So we've got a photocopier at work and I think it's 2p a side to photocopy. But, you know, I always think that's quite funny because it's not actually 2p a side to photocopy it. Because if you photocopy something with more ink, it actually, in terms of the direct cost, actually, yeah, it costs more to do that um, than if you photocopy, you know, occasionally, very occasionally when I make a mistake, I run a blank piece of paper through the photocopier and it just photocopies nothing. And 2p comes off my account, um, but it hasn't really actually cost 2p to photocopy nothing. It's probably cost something electricity-wise, but not 2p. But the reason, uh, you know, it's, it's charging a standard cost, like the average cost of what an average worksheet would cost to photocopy. Um, so that's what standard um, costing is. Um, but you'd, you'd need to gather a large amount of... Um, information to be able to work out the average cost anyway um, and you know if I suppose a, a business um, it's a little bit like benchmarking in some ways they might say to the employees right this is the, the cost that you should be able to produce the product for and so you may encourage you know un, unintended results in terms of cost cutting um, to try and, you know, the employees try and get it down to that standard cost.